Namaste. Welcome to day eight of our 21 day yoga journey. My name is Nandita and today I will be guiding you through this session. So um, to give you a little bit of background about myself, I am uh, a research scientist. I work in the field of molecular biology by profession, but I am also a level two Ayush certified international yoga instructor. And I've been associated with BYVK um, or which is now BYK right from the first TTC batch. So it's really a pleasure to be conducting this session today. Before we begin, let's start with a small prayer. So you can bring your palms to your chest, close your eyes, at the center of your heart, Visualize a white lotus and in that lotus you can visualize either the feet of your guru, padukas, any deity you love or whatever it is that you like. Surrender today's practice to this entity. And with a heart full of love and gratitude, let us begin. Let's start with three ohms. Let's take a deep breath in for Om. Breathe in. Akhandamandalakaram Vyaktam yena characharam Tatpadam darshitam yena Tasmai shri gurve namaha Adnyanathimirandhasya Nyananjana shalakaya Chakshuru nilitam yena Tasmai shri gurve namaha Gurur brahma gurur vishnu Gurur devo maheshwaraha Guru Sakshat Para Brahma Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Brahma Nandam Paramasukhadam Kevalam Yanamurtim Dvanpatitam Gagana Satrisham Tatpamasyadi Laksham Ekam nityam vimala machalam Sarvadhi sakshi bhutam Bhavatitam triguna rahitam Sadgurum tam namami Yanamulam guru purti Puja mulam guru padam Mantra Moolam Guru Vakyam Moksha Moolam Guru Kripa Yogena Chittasya Padena Vacham Malam Sharira Svacha Vaitya Kenam Yopa Karotam Pravaram Munina Patanjalim Pranjali Ranatosmi Sweet. 
slowly open your eyes. And we can begin today's session. So today's session is going to be on the balancing of breath. So why does breath really matter? Do you think it's important? Maybe we can just do yoga by standing on our heads and twisting ourselves into pretzels and, you know, we can look really good on Instagram. So does breathing really matter? You know, I mean, you're going to look good. You're to a large extent going to feel good. So why the breath? So to understand this, um, you know, I'd love to give you an answer, but I want you to experience this for yourself. So let's do a little experiment. Close your eyes and just trust me. Okay? Close your eyes and slowly bring your awareness to your breath. And don't try to fix it. Don't try to change it. Just watch where you are at in this moment. Observe the breath near your nostrils. Observe the breath in your chest. Observe the breath in your stomach. And observe all the sensations here. Notice the tightness in your face, in your chest, in your stomach, in your wrists, your arms, your legs, your feet. Just become aware. Don't try to change anything. And now, while you're aware of all of this, think of something that made you very angry this week. And I know there's enough things that made you angry. So think about it. It could have been that your boss said something. You could have been unfairly treated. It could have been the traffic. It could have been someone, you know, taking credit for your work, something your partner said, or even worse, didn't say. Bring that up. And I want you to be angry. Fully embody that experience. That first impulse that you had the moment this incident occurred. Be in that moment. Be angry. Fully angry. Embody it. And become aware of your breath. Stay angry. Notice if your breath has changed. Notice if the breath has become faster. Keep being angry. Notice the sensations in your chest. Notice if the chest has gotten tight or it's relaxed. Notice the sensations in your stomach. Be angry. Notice the sensations in your entire body. Your shoulders, your neck, your arms, your legs. Come back to the breath. Notice the pace of the breath again. And now, take a deep inhale. And with a ha sound, exhale through the mouth. Ha. Deep inhale. Exhale through the mouth. Ha. One last time. Deep inhale. Exhale through the mouth. Ha. Let your breathing return to normal. Give it a few moments. And now, think of something that made you very joyful. It might not have been in this week. It might have been 10 years ago. But think about it. Something that still makes you smile. Something that makes you ecstatic. Time spent with your children or your loved ones. Time spent with the puppy. Just your garden looking beautiful. Time with your guru. Think about this feeling. Fully embody that joy. 
be in that peaceful joyful blissful moment completely notice your breath stay in that moment notice if the pace of your breath has changed notice your chest notice the stomach notice if the tightness has shifted notice the arms the legs the entire body stay in that moment of bliss and come back to the breath become aware of the breath again notice if there's a shift in the breath again and relax take a deep breath in and a deep breath out a normal breath in and the normal breath out and open your eyes so for those of you who really truly embodied these feelings you must have noticed a shift in the way your body reacts you might have felt a little tightness in the chest a little tightness in the stomach initially maybe even in the head you would have noticed your breath became faster and it was like you were completely living it was like that experience was happening again in this moment as you were living it in this moment you would have noticed a similar shift on the opposite side when you thought of something blissful so the first thing this tells us is that we are in control of what we choose right of what we choose to embody and the second thing this tells us is that there is a clear link between our emotions our breath and our mind also our physical state so what the yogis said was the rishis and the yogis uh, the whole concept of yoga what they said is if your physical state and your emotional state can affect your breathing then your breath should also be able to affect your physical and emotional state and that is like a huge part of what we do with pranayam we really try to learn the rules of prana and breath or shwasa is a part of this prana so today we will be exploring the basics of this breath so to speak or uh, pranayam but an introduction to pranayam and then there will be a series of teachers who will be taking you through this in detail as we go through this week right so now i want to introduce a concept called the panchakoshas the panchakoshas come to us from the taittiriya upanishad so the panchakoshas you will also be studying more in detail later you will have a dedicated meditation to this also if you looked at your calendar but i just want to touch on the concept today and why is it relevant to what we are doing so the panchakoshas say the concept is that we have five kosh- koshas or panchakoshas these are five layers or coverings of our body the outermost covering is the anandmay kosha uh, sorry the annamay kosha or the food body right anna food so food body this is this external body the next layer immediately after the annamay kosha is the pranamay kosha so when we do pranayam this is what is directly affecting the pranamay kosha what do you think is affecting the food kosha asanas right so you've been looking at asanas through now you've been working on the annamay kosha today we will start with the pranamay kosha and because the prana also affects the emotional state the mind the next kosha is the manomay kosha okay right? so through the breath that sits the pranamay kosha that sits between the annamay kosha and the manomay kosha can affect 
both of these koshas right so this is why pranayam becomes important now after the manomay kosha you have the vidnyanmay kosha which is your higher intelligence and then the anandmay kosha which is really beyond all of this you know absolute bliss today we will be primarily working with the pranmay kosha and these three anandmay kosha pranmay kosha and manomay kosha okay so um, i think we should begin with uh, just some exercises you've been doing for the annamay kosha so that we can focus on the pranamay kosha better okay so let's start with basic sukshma vyayam so we will do all of these sitting down right so just follow my lead and we can go ahead so we'll start with neck movement exhale bring your chin to the chest inhale all the way back exhale chin to the chest inhale all the way back one more time exhale chin to the chest inhale all the way back and come to the starting position now exhale look to the right be careful to not move your upper body just the neck to the right inhale center exhale left inhale center exhale right inhale center exhale left inhale center let's do this one more time exhale right inhale center exhale left inhale center now drop your ears to your right shoulder again don't lift your shoulder just drop the ear and you can with your right hand just give it a slight push down to deepen the stretch on the left side keep breathing inhale back to the center same thing on the left side exhale down gentle push inhale back now we are just going to tilt the head to the right and do half circles only on the right side exhale come to the front inhale back exhale front inhale back work out all those kinks in the upper back and neck exhale front inhale back and come to the center exhale left side half circles on the left exhale in the front inhale behind exhale in the front inhale behind exhale inhale and slowly come to the center inhale and come up okay now let's do some hand movements so if you've been practicing this for a while we can start with both hands together inhale up so make sure your palms are facing down and they don't touch just come up pull the stomach in stretch the arms up keep breathing exhale down inhale up exhale down inhale up exhale down and now bring your arms to the front palms facing each other inhale back exhale forward inhale back exhale forward inhale back exhale forward and relax now just a few elbow circles bring your elbows together arms near the ears all the way back and down Let's do this two more times. Inhale, 
एक्सहेल इनहेल एक्सहेल वन मोर टाइम इनहेल एक्सहेल एंड दी अदर वे इनहेल एक्सहेल इनहेल एस यू ओपन द चेस्ट Exhale as you bring the arms down. Last time, inhale. Exhale and relax. While you're sitting, keep one arm on the side. Don't contract it like this. Make sure this place. Keep your arm a little bit away. And inhale, lift your arm up. Make sure your thigh is not lifting off the floor. Just inhale and up. Stretch your arm out. Pull it and look up. If this is easy, you can always bend this elbow then. But make sure the thigh doesn't lift off. Stay here. Keep breathing. Five, four, three. Keep pulling your arm. Two, one. Inhale. Come back up. And now same thing on the other side. Make sure you lift this. Place your arm a little away. Try to keep this thigh on the floor. Lift this arm, the opposite arm, and look up. Make sure you're pulling on that arm. This is easy. Then you can start bending the elbows, but keep the thigh on the floor. Look up. Keep breathing. Five, four, three, two. One and come back. Of course, as usual, if you have any injury, if there's pain at any point, please don't push your body beyond its limits. Stop immediately. You know, even after the sessions, if you have any questions, feel free to email us. We're all on the WhatsApp group. So just be aware, be mindful of your body when you're doing these exercises. Okay. Now let's do a simple twist. Opposite palm, opposite knee. Other palm behind. So the other palm is behind, and exhale and twist. Try to look as far back as you can. Five. Keep breathing. Very important. Four, three, two, one. Inhale. Come back. The other hand and the other knee. And the same hand and same knee. That hand goes behind. Twist on an exhale. Stay here. Look back as far as you can. Continue to breathe. Five, four. Listen to your body. Three, two, one, and come back. Now let's just open up the thighs a little bit. So, if it's possible, just put your heel in your elbow or your hand, whatever is comfortable, and hold the same leg and same knee. Just rock it a little bit. And if it's possible, go all the way, rock it. Start opening up the hip joint. This will help increase your mobility and bring it down. You can also just flap this side and the other side. Again, the opposite hand and opposite leg. So that hand goes under the heel. Same leg, same hand. Goes on the knee. If this is easy, try to get the elbow and rock like a baby. And bring it down. And try to just flap this half a butterfly, arithmetically. Again, please listen to your body. If you have any joint pain, 
inflammation in the ankles, in the knees, in the hips, please do this with caution. And if there's pain, avoid it. And relax. Bring both feet together. And gently flap. And go all the way down. Come up. The last exercise for today. Spread the legs. Spread the legs. Pull the toes back. Clasp your fingers. Now whatever happens, keep the elbows locked like this. Hands straight. Feet straight. Toes pulled back. And let's do some chakki chalana. Keep breathing. And the opposite side. And relax. Wiggle your toes and fingers a little bit. Open up your legs. And let's get ready to sit for some time. It's going to be an active city because we're going to do pranayama. Okay. Now, as strange as this sounds, let us learn to breathe. Okay. So, when we breathe, the tendency when we are stressed is for the stomach to go in when we breathe in. You can try this for yourselves when you're at work. Right? So, we breathe in and then the stomach goes in. But logically, that doesn't make sense, right? If you're trying to blow a balloon, Right? If you blow air into it, it will expand. So if you're breathing in, you breathe into your lungs, your lungs fill up and then they'll push air into the stomach. So the stomach fills up. If you've ever seen a baby sleep, that's exactly how they sleep. Right? They breathe in, the stomach goes up, they breathe out, the stomach goes down. That's how we should be breathing. In case of stress, you know, when there's stress, when there's cortisol in the body, it's not bad. The body needs stress. It's bad when this stress, this cortisol does not leave the body. So, how do you get it to leave the body? How do you actively get your stress levels down? One, in, one very effective way to do this, and I've tried this with, um, you know, all these gadgets and everything. I mean, I'm a scientist, so I tend to experiment a lot on myself. This is one of the most effective ways to bring your stress down. So, let's practice this. Sit in a comfortable position. Spine comfortably straight. Breathe in through your nose. And expand the stomach. Gently let the navel push out. And as you exhale, contract the stomach. Pull the navel towards the spine. Gently. Inhale, expand. You can also keep your hand on the stomach. It might make it easier. Exhale, contract, pull the navel towards the spine. Inhale. Exhale. Two more times. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And relax. Let your breathing return to normal. So I highly recommend practicing this every day. You can do 10 to 20 breaths before you sleep. It will also help you breathe deeper and it will relax you. A more effective way of breathing deeply is diaphragmatic breathing. You will also be looking at a lot of this in tomorrow's session, uh, which is uh, focused on the lungs. But just to give you an introduction, what actually happens when we breathe, right? We have a diaphragm muscle here. As that contracts, the rib cage expands, right? It's pulling it down. So the rib cage becomes bigger. The lungs have more space to expand. So you breathe into the lungs. And as you're taking breath into the lungs, automatically the stomach will also fill with air. And as you contract, the diaphragm is going back up. I mean, as you uh, exhale, the lungs will expel that air, right? So ideally, when you're breathing, if you focus on the diaphragm when you breathe, you can take a very deep breath and you can actually see the movement of that ribcage. So you'll notice when I'm uh, holding my arms in this way, just around my lower ribs, and I breathe, 
you will see my elbows moving out i'm not actively taking my shoulders up my elbows are moving out because my rib cage is expanding right and when i exhale my rib cage contracts so we can all try this together if this is difficult so stick to the stomach breathing once this becomes easy then move here but definitely try to do this so let's try five breaths this way let's breathe in don't worry about the stomach for now just focus on the diaphragm try to expand your lungs inhale exhale inhale exhale inhale exhale make sure your shoulders aren't getting pulled up inhale exhale last one if anything moves it's because of your rib cage inhale exhale and relax so this is another powerful practice if the stomach breathing is easy move to the diaphragmatic breathing and try and do 10 20 breaths of this every night you can also do it after you wake up okay so just stay with the breath for a little bit okay now we're going to come to the next pranayam that becomes important which is really the also in a huge way the crux of this lesson balancing the breath now when you we be doing all this pranayam but one thing that we actually haven't addressed is how the breathing in the two nostrils might be different at any given point so if you look at your nostrils right now you can try this and just keep your finger underneath and you'll notice that one nostril is more active than the other right if you look at this 90 minutes from now maybe not after this session because you want to balance them but uh, if you you know every 90 minutes keep as just as a fun thing to try throughout the day keep testing your nostrils and you'll see that they keep flipping right there are only four times which are basically the sandhya times you know which is why they say it's good to meditate at that time uh at the sandhya times both these nadis are balanced but the yogis figured out a way to balance both of these uh, both of the nostrils right with a pranayam called nadi shodhana uh, now before we do nadi shodhana i'm just going to talk about nadis very quickly just to touch on the concept nadis are basically like these energy channels in our body so different yogic texts will have different numbers for how many number of nadis we have in the body the yoga pradipika that we follow says there are 72000 nadis approximately we care mostly about three main nadis the ida the pingra and the shushumna so your ida nadi is your left nostril uh, the nadi the left nadi and your pingra nadi is the right nadi why does this matter your left nadi is your chandra nadi it's a cooling nadi when this nadi is active your uh, you know you are in a state conducive for the inner workings doing something creative you know if you're going to paint if you uh, just if you are quieting down so the left nadi becomes very important but if you're going to go and fight a battle if you're going to go and do an interview if you're going to go and have a conversation with your boss but sometimes feels like a battle honestly for all of these things if you're going to do a lot of logical thinking you know you have to be sharp your right nostril you want the right nostril to be active because that is what controls all of this your right nostril crosses over here controls is related to your left hemisphere your left nostril crosses here at the adnya related to your right hemisphere right brain hemisphere right so this is why this, these are important now loosely translated your left nadi is like the parasympathetic nervous system if we have to look at it in western um, as western uh, uh, you know uh, terminology so your parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for bringing your body back into a state of rest your right nostril 
is like your sympathetic nervous system which is responsible for getting the body ready for action you know so all your fear fight flight your adrenaline all of that is right nostril stuff and all your sleep uh, you know you're reading a book you're painting calming down that is all your left nod, uh, uh, nadi activity so when we are meditating we want to be calm like the left, left nostril but we want to be alert like the right nostril also so you need both of them to be in balance and only when both these nadis are in balance the energy can flow from the shushumna which is right in the middle so this is another reason why we want to balance both the nadis so let's look at a practice nadi shuddhi or anulom vilom to do this again you can practice this uh, as many times as you like throughout the day it's a very safe practice irrespective of you know if you have high blood pressure or low blood pressure this is a very simple very effective breathing technique so let's try this together i'm just going to come closer so you can see you can see my fingers this is the mudra that we are going to do the pranav mudra or nastika mudra which we are going to use we are predominantly going to use this ring finger and we are going to use the thumb of the right hand okay if it becomes very difficult just use these two fingers and follow my instruction but try to use this now we are going to block you can do this with me block your right nostril with your right thumb and then block your left nostril with the right index finger so just practice this right thumb index finger right thumb index finger right thumb right nostril right index finger left nostril just get used to this okay now place your right thumb on the right nostril remember for this practice we always start with the left nostril we breathe in from the left and exhale from the left and that completes one round so just follow my instructions if you haven't done this before let's start breathe out from the left nostril just a regular breath and let's begin breathe in from the left 2 3 4 lock the left nostril hold 2 3 4 exhale from the right nostril 2 3 4 inhale from the right nostril 2 3 4 block the right nostril hold 2 3 4 exhale from the left nostril 2 3 4 inhale from the left nostril 2 3 4 block and hold 2 3 4 exhale from the right nostril 2 3 4 inhale from the right 2 3 4 lock the right hold 2 3 4 exhale from the left 2 3 4 let's do one more round inhale 2 3 4 hold 2 3 4 exhale through the right 2 3 4 inhale through the right 2 3 4 block the right hold 2 3 4 exhale from the left 2 3 4 now one last round try to make your breath as silent as possible so let's start inhale from the left 2 3 4 hold 2 3 4 exhale through the right silently 2 3 4 inhale 2 3 4 hold 2 3 4 exhale from the left 2 3 4 and relax Just stay with your breath for a few moments.
try to observe the breathing in both your nostrils. Notice if anything has shifted. And let your breathing return to normal. Let's do the last pranayam for today. After this pranayam, just keep your eyes closed. We'll do a short meditation and end the session. Okay? So we are going to do Brahmri. Uh, don't do it immediately. Just listen first because uh, once you uh, block your ears, you won't be able to hear. You're going to take your thumb. You've got this flap of the ear. Place the thumb on it and use it to block the ear. Okay? Both the hands, we're going to do that. Both the thumbs. The other four fingers are going to be on the head. And we're going to close our eyes. We're going to focus on the center here of the eyebrows. And then we're going to hum like a bee. So uh, in case you're not, if you don't know how to hum like a bee, think of the letter M or the end of OM. So when we say OM, so that M, mm, just keep saying that M. So what we're going to do is we're going to breathe in. Focus on the center and as we breathe out, we're going to say mm. and then when you're out of breath, we're going to breathe in again and say mm. we're going to do this five times. Okay. So uh, one important thing to mention about Brahmi, why this is such an important practice and I would recommend this to everybody to do. Be a little careful if you have low blood pressure. Eventually, it will regulate it. But uh, Brahmri, first of all, uh, if you draw a line from here and here, you will see what is called the pineal gland or the pineal gland. The pineal gland or pineal gland is responsible for circadian rhythm, meaning it controls when you, uh, you know, your sleep cycle and your biorhythm. So this is a great way even to fall asleep. I have had so many people, I've taught this to so many people and without fail this pranayam always 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 helps them the other thing it does is uh, you know it's kind of removing the fossils i think of it as ultrasound you know so it removes the fossils from the pineal gland so in a way it kind of makes you fresh and youthful again and the pineal gland is also very close to the pituitary gland so i also suspect that it has an impact on the pituitary which uh, is basically your master gland and helps control a lot of your hormonal health the Brahmri also impacts the throat. So people with thyroid problems have shown great results, there's scientific research on this, on how it impacts the thyroid gland. So whether it's hyper or hypothyroidism, Brahmri always helps, especially for hyperthyroidism. And another thing it does, which is why it was so popular during COVID, is it releases a great amount of nitric oxide in the nasal passage. And nitric oxide is a powerful vasodilator. Vasodilator means it uh, dilates the blood vessels. It makes them bigger. So a blood vessel that was this small and pumping blood now suddenly has expanded. So the blood flows with less pressure. So it brings your blood pressure down. And over time, it regulates it. So Brahmri is just a beautiful, beautiful practice to have in your daily routine especially. So let's do it together. Thumbs on the ears, fingers on the top, focus in the center and Okay, five breaths. Let's start. Inhale. Mm. 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 And bring your palms to your knees. Keep your eyes closed. Notice the sensations. 
Notice if you feel anything in your ears, in the top of your head, your face, your body. Just observe the sensation. Stay with these sensations. And now slowly bring your awareness to your breath. Bring your awareness to the tip of the nostrils. Notice the breath at the tip of your nostril. As the breath enters and as the breath leaves, just become aware. Don't try to fix anything. Don't try to change. Just watch. Notice the temperature of the incoming breath. And the temperature of the outgoing breath. Now as you breathe in, breathe in from the nostrils to the third eye. And breathe out from the third eye through the nostril. In through the nostrils to the third eye. Out from the third eye through the nostril. One last time, breathe into the third eye. Out through the nostril. And now breathe into the stomach. Out through the nostril. In through the nostrils to the stomach. Out from the stomach through the nostrils. One last time, breathe into the stomach. Breathe out through the nostril. Let your breathing return to normal. And stay with your breath just for a few moments. Nothing to do, nothing to fix. Just watch the breath. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamivavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Vip 
of your palms. Gently cup them over the eyes. Open your eyes into your palms. And with a happy, grateful heart. Open your eyes and have a great day today. We hope to see you again tomorrow.